Hello, you join me outside the hotel in the rain. Uh, it's, well, it's raining, it's miserable, but uh, we're about 47 kilometers, 57 kilometers away from Meteora Monastery, and uh, it says it would take uh, just under an hour to get there. So I thought we'd trundle over there. It's um, 20 past 12 now. I can't get on the ferry till midnight. Brilliant, all right, I just let the bike warm up a bit. It's uh, cold and miserable today. It's about 14 degrees Celsius, I think, was the highest temperature today. And uh, yeah, it's pretty miserable, so. Yeah, not a lot to say about this town, to be honest. It's not what I was expecting. I thought I was getting a rural town. I didn't realize it was such a big place. Everyone's very friendly, and again, walking into that cafe I found really tough because it was just loads of random old men sort of just chatting away to each other and I walk in and everyone went absolutely silent but everyone was really nice. There we go, so yeah it's still raining um, but again I've really not got much to do today as I was saying earlier and maybe I'll use this bit instead because this might be a bit less windy but as I was saying earlier basically uh, really? No, I'm not going down there not got a lot to do today to be honest I can't the ferry leaves uh, Italy the ferry leaves Greece at 1 a.m. so I can get on it tonight at maybe about 11 p.m. and then I'll kill as much time as I can there and then about 10 or 11 o'clock at night I can make my way to the dock and uh, I'll be hopefully allowed to board the ferry they'll strap the bike down and uh, I can go to sleep in my little cabin for the night All right, well it's clearing up slightly in front of us, so can you see all these massive mountains suddenly appearing out of the clouds? Well, one of them is um, Meteora, which is a huge monastery, and it's a massive monastery, and it's cut into the side of the cliff, which is, I think, it's going to be amazing. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Hopefully we can start to see uh, Meteora Monastery. I think it's actually on the other side of these rocks. According to the sat nav, it's around here. According to that sign, and this sign as well, you've got to carry on going straight. Well, this is it. This is a meteora, and uh, it's absolutely amazing. Now, they're lots of Welcome back. Uh, it was absolutely silent and very quiet. Oh my god. Lovely. It was very quiet before all these people appeared, but that generally seems to be tend this generally tends to be what happens here. Everyone sort of just appears, takes a few photos and then moves on to the next scenic spot. So it was quiet when I stopped. Anyway, here we are, Meteora. Fantastic. We're gonna go loop around, go back up the hill and uh, see what else there is to see. So generally, if you come on a coach trip to Meteora, what seems to basically just happen is you obviously just shuttle up and down this road and you stop off at every single scenic opportunity. And I don't blame them, because there are so many amazing things to see around here. I mean, what an amazing view. This is something I was not expecting to see. Brilliant. Right, let's go and explore the monastery, shall we? They're meant to, what are they? They're not meant to judge. I'm sure they won't judge my parking. Here we go, we are here at Meteora, which is a monastery. Now, sadly, I couldn't take any photos inside uh, except one bit, so here's a few photos from that one bit, but why do you need photos of inside when this is the view? So, absolutely fantastic. And it stopped raining, which is really nice, so. 
Oh, an amazing place. I couldn't have not have imagined this. Anyway, there's a big swarm of Americans coming, so I got on their free tour because I just followed them through the museum. I just followed them through the chapel and I got an English tour, which was great, but they're, they're swarming over here now, so I'm going to make a dash down the hill and uh, we're going to head off to the next place, which is a national park. And after that, there's a big gorge. So let's get on the road and uh, see what else we can see. There's loads in that basement. Now that was Meteor and Monastery, there it is, just past this silver car. What an amazing place. And I've got to say, the artwork inside there, unlike anything I've seen before. You weren't allowed to take any photos, but here's a Google photo of inside, and uh, yeah, it looks absolutely brilliant. So I thought, what we'd do... Oh, so I woke the little doggy up. Oh, sorry. Let's try not to wake that dog up, but... Basically, this is just the general area. Um, so I was reading it was one of the old sort of priests, sort of religious guys who named the rock Meteora um, and put his chapel on top, his monastery and uh, then the people liked the name so much they gave it to the whole area so the, generally the whole area, all I think it was all nine rocks, something like that so it's something like there were 26 monasteries and only six survived today Some of them are just um, fully gone and uh, others are just sort of not safe for the tourists to visit because they're pretty dilapidated but what an amazing place and uh, when they'd arrive they'd live in solitude and then uh, after a while they'd start living together and there are two different types of monk as well so one isn't allowed to own any property or money and they have to obey the abbot and the other one is allowed to own property and they don't have to listen to an abbot uh, but they're still a monk and they still practice whatever monks do uh, and they obviously still are practicing as well because there were a few of them and they wear like a black hat that looks like it's just been sort of sat on at the top and uh, black robes and uh, yeah they look well they look brilliant i think it's a very very fashionable style so one thing to watch out for if you're coming around here is people forgetting it's a road uh, and just standing in the middle of it. Now, I'm guilty of that slightly, but at least I have a good look. Check this bad boy out. Stop there in a corner, great idea. Fantastic place to stop. I mean, the scenery, I'd do it for the scenery, yeah. Fantastic. And again, the honk here doesn't mean anger necessarily. It normally just means, hello, I'm here. Anyway, what an amazing place. Just if you come in here, watch out for coaches, people darting across to park in the viewpoint, uh, just all that general stuff, because when you've got that up there distracting you, I find it distracting enough, but 
when you're doing these roads, just watch out. Oh, if you need a wee, go down there. Everyone seems to be doing that. Chum, chum, chunk, chunk, chunk. So I thought I'd just give you a quick whistle stop tour. I don't know what any of the rocks are called. Generally, they're all referred to as Meteora. Well, hello. You join me in uh, Greece, in one of the woodlands, and uh, it's scenic as anything. Now, I've got a funny feeling. I don't really know what was going on uh, with TomTom, Tom, but I think I need to go back the way I just came for 17 kilometres, which is just what I've just done. Um, and I need to go onto the motorway, because there seems to be no other way to join the motorway. other than to go back that way, so it's a bit annoying. I'm typical, as I get the camera out, that's the first car that's passed me in about half an hour. But the rain's coming in, you can see the clouds in the distance, and I don't want to be here in the dark, and uh, I've already had one deer jump out on me, so it's a lovely place, but uh, I think I'm going to get going, and I'm just going to check if there's a quicker way to get to where I was hoping to get to, so... I thought I'd just do a quick overview of what happened here. Um, essentially, I can see the deer running down the hillside from between the trees, and I can also see that it's a very steep slope, and there was no way that deer was just standing on it. So you can see I lower my speed, and I'm doing about half, and then you can see when I see the deer pop out, that's when I really haul the brakes on. But I never came to a full stop, because one, I didn't have chance to look behind me, so I had no idea if there was another motorbike or car uh, suddenly planning to approach. Um, and at the same time, I noticed the deer had crossed the yellow line, so there was no point in me doing a full stop, um, as I was very confident it was just the one deer. But it's very magical in the rain. This is one of the Greek national parks right at the top. And I would not think I'm in Greece right now. When I look around now... I genuinely think I'm in Wales, to be honest with you. Wales or Lake District or the Peak District or something. It really does not feel like Greece at all. Anyway, we've got just over an hour to do uh, till we get to uh, Ionina, uh, which is a halfway point f uh, until I get to Iguazmania. Uh, I think the actual way to say it is Iguazmania, something like that. Anyway, really, I'm just on the lookout for more things that might jump out at me and it's so tricky because I want to go a lot faster but I just don't trust it now I don't think I've ever had my heart beat so fast I think it did once when I did some manual labour once but aside from the times I've done manual labour <laughs> I don't think my heart's ever beated so fast and it's so annoying because I want the visor up but also at the same time I'm quite liking having a nice dry face. And I've got to say, there are some huge rocks that have fallen down on this road. getting tempted to put the jumper on to be honest with you but we'll carry on going a bit more okay so my mic has died again uh, essentially i carried on through the greek national parks uh, one two three and four and five uh right in the top of the north of greece one outstanding place 
every single I've, I've cut most of it out because it's quite boring with no engine noise um, but every single twist and turn reminded me of Scotland and then Wales and then Spain and it was an absolutely amazing place I then stopped for petrol uh, where I had probably the oldest petrol pump attendant I've ever met in my life um, I let her start it um, and then she only seemed to get about seven litres in. So I uh, asked if I could do it and she was like, oh, yes, please. So she did say no at the start, but uh, I only had about seven litres in my 17 litre tank uh, and I knew I could get it a bit higher than that. But she was very nice. Um, and then I carried on to this restaurant uh, and it was at this restaurant I realised that um, one, why don't burgers have bread? And two, it was really time I should get going on the road because I was further away than I thought. And so after probably one of the most nerve-wracking 110 kilometres in the pitch black and then streetlight and then pitch black again, I eventually made it to the ferry port of Igemnitsa. Igeme... Ige... Hua. Igemnitsa. Igemania. Igemania. Right. Igemania. I finally made it to the ferry port of Igemania, where I spent most of the night uh, chatting to my new friend from Turkey, uh, Azan. Uh, what an absolutely top lad he was. Um, and then there we go. So unfortunately, I've got no footage uh, of getting on the ship, um, but here's me in the morning. Well, here we go. Uh, we're in the ferry. Uh, we're just in my little cabin and uh, oh, what a relief to be on the ship. Uh, it turns out I didn't need to rush at all um, because the ship was delayed and uh, unlike the sort of uh, Spain to UK ferry, um, when it turns up you literally just bundle on and they'll shut the door and off you go. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick tour of the cabin and then it's half two because uh, I, I met this great uh, other biker um, in the sort of queue so we've just been sort of drinking and uh, having a good laugh all night as well he's very similar age to me so uh, and again travels have taught me we're all the same people so he's absolutely a cracking laugh so if you're watching this thanks very much hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the morning anyway so I don't really need to say bye but anyway let me give you a quick tour of the room okay there's the door Here's the ensuite, very nice. I won't get a chance to use it. We're only on the ship for 10 hours. My stuff down there, and then here's my bed, and then I've just got some things on charge. But again, for, uh, I paid uh, 220 pounds for this, um, and we are literally blasting from Greece to Italy overnight as well. So this is Anek, super fast. Anek, what an incredible ship. Honestly, this beats Minoan lines. This is so modern and so smart. Here's a quick shot of the foyer. Absolutely fantastic. Well, hello, welcome back. Uh, we're here on the ship. And uh, here's my new friend, hi. Brilliant, added a nice beer so it's a good laugh. So yeah, everything's ready to roll and uh, I faffed for long enough so it's only time to uh, get on the road. <laughs> Probably is because they make us park so close together. It was exactly as it was as exactly as described. It's a bit of a, just a mad scramble to get off the ship. It's absolutely fantastic. And we just need to go straight. They're absolutely brilliant. It's amazing the people you meet. Hey. That was a bit of a weird detour. What? I don't know why we had to do that. That was a that was a weird road. But yeah, yeah. well, there we go. So it's a really smart ship, and uh, everything was absolutely brilliant on it. The only thing is, I would have liked a bit more time, of course. But there we go. And because we're back in Italy now. Uh, oh. This is different. Yeah, the only thing is, because I would have liked a bit more time, because we're back in Italy now. It's also only about 8am. Welcome back. 
bit of an awkward place to stop but there you go so we've got 38 kilometers to do and uh, it says it'll take us just over half an hour so let's get on the road will do okay bye that's oh, top land right this is a bit of a mistake coming out of here well, this is very different I should say as well it's uh about 20 to 10 and it's sort of rush hour at the moment Oh, come on. Well, this is different. 